Dude, week four in the books. I'm super excited that we get to do another podcast this week. I apologize about last week. I had a doggy emergency. Louie, please don't knock over any of the equipment while you're over there. <laughs> but we're back. Vice is back in the studio today. You we're going to get into some good fantasy football. I saw, I saw a commercial about... People's animals, dogs, they eat out of the refrigerators and like they eat like better than I do most days of the week. <laughs> um, maybe your dog was trying to tell you something. What What are you feeding your animals, Hoppy? I don't know. Uh, apparently not enough hot dogs, I guess. <laughs> but You, you got to look at those commercials. You got to feed them regular human food. Yeah. <laughs> All right, dude. Week four in the books, dude. I snuck by my matchup. I don't know how I didn't look at yours particularly, um, but... Uh, I beat David Getty, so, uh, you know, fuck you, David Getty. Fuck you, buddy. The rivalry continues. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, sh- I shouldn't, like, brag about that because I, sne- I sneak by a guy that's barely out of last place. So Yeah, I, I lost to Spitzer uh, 105.98 to 105. Uh, yeah, that's insane. No stack correction today? No. Unf- I looked at it last night. I was like, oh, maybe there's an extra sack or something. But oh there was God. not. Uh, <laughs> Mike Williams, one catch for 11 yards. And honestly, going into Sunday night, I didn't think I had much of a chance. He had Tom Brady, Mike Evans, and he had Mike Williams. Yeah, Spitzer has one of the best teams in the league. He's, I think he's second place right now. Yeah, right? and between those three players, he managed less than 20 points. So yeah. it actually made a game of it where it probably shouldn't have been a game anyway. But uh, I was not expecting to win, but just that added drama at least let me hang on for a little bit last night. Yeah, that's uh, – I mean, I thought – Brady on Brady on Sunday night was not great. He did not look good. But if there's one thing we know old Billy does, takes away the best weapon, well, Tom Brady is probably the best weapon of all time. I don't like to admit that, and it is on record now, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, he's he's really good. He's been really great this whole season, and, and uh, Belichick kind of took him out of the equation on that. So that, unfortunately nullifies all of the other players on top of that. Mike Williams, or uh, Mike Evans, and you know yeah, Chris, Chris Godwin, Godwin and all those guys. So um, Yeah, I mean, I almost won a million dollars in DraftKings. I don't know if you saw the league chat or not, but I was that Leonard Fournette pass at the end away from probably winning like $200,000. So, and my matchup. I don't even know if you would be here if you won 200000 You'd be too highbrow for the podcast. I would probably point. come on and just brag and then <laughs> just get up and mic drop and walk away. That would be, honestly, that would be so fun. I feel like we could, we're like rivaling the fantasy footballers who one of their guys won like $40,000 yeah. and then you come on my like tiny podcast and you won two hundred and you're like, yeah, eat shit. Yeah, just like message me in from Hawaii yeah. or some shit at the bar. Like, What's up? Buy or sell, bitches. Dude, that reminds me of that one guy cashed out the big payout on Monday night, taking the Chargers over the, um, oh my God, the Raiders. Wow. Five hundred dollars. He cashed in one hundred and twenty six thousand. He had a chance to cash out. Um, I think it was going to be for like eighty, and he's like, no, let it ride, and he hit, and he got another forty k out of it. So uh, yeah, I mean. Go to go to Iowa, put some money down on some sports books, I guess. Well, I, I, I mean, maybe a, a good segue for that is uh, last night somebody actually also hit the Powerball um, in California. One ticket took home seven hundred million dollars. Dude, seven mil. I don't even or seven hundred million. I don't even know what I would do with that money. It's insane. So I would uh, I would have bought everything that I wanted, and I'd still have like. Six hundred and ninety-nine million dollars. It's incredible. <laughs> I don't even know what I would do. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna do a little Powerball segment later on to uh, recap some of the, some of the numbers that were hit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, let's. Uh, do you want to do matchups first? Let's yeah, do. Let's, yeah, do, let's do, some do some matchups, matchups. first. So, um, you know, we're just gonna start it out week five. We got a lot of uh, a lot of interesting matchups here. I think this is kind of. I think I said this last time. Um, you know, these like middle, you know, the first couple wins don't really matter that much all, you know, in the grand scheme, especially with the extended season. Uh, but now we're starting to kind of get into the middle part of the season. These are really where you're going to start to see separation, I think, between the bottom and the top. Um, you know, I, I happen to be on the good end of that one. Um, but there are a lot of people like in the middle of our league right now. Um, you have uh, Jackie leading the pack. Um, Nick, uh, Michael, um, 
Filica, who I don't know how he's lost two games. He's got a really good lineup. Um, but uh, I mean, there's a lot of people at five and three, four and four, even the three and five teams vice you're in that, you're in that thing. Um, there it, it's, this is really where you're going to start to see, are you going to, if you win this week, you're back in it hundred percent. If you lose, you're going to start to kind of be on that falling out of things. Um, so the first matchup I got, um, I don't know if you have the same one here. I have Mike versus uh, the milkman himself, right. uh, Mr. Pat Howard. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing about this league is, or this year, I should say, this league is that you can get two wins in a week. Yeah, so I was chatting with Michael about this last night. You can catch up in a hurry, and that also lets you exhibit a little bit more patience than maybe you can in the past. Like, last year, if I had started one and three, you start thinking about, like, oh, I need to, like, blow up my team, and I like I need to make something happen, like, right now. But being at the fact that I can go from three to five to five and five, it makes things a little bit different. Plus, we've got that extra added week. Yeah. So it gives you a little bit more time to give your players a chance to write themselves. Like maybe people who started slow, maybe they can turn it around. You know, um, and I will, like I that. will apologize because I talked shit about the media not affecting anything early on, and now it's really, it really is starting to come into sure. play. Um, you have people that are able to win games but lose the median and vice versa. You know, my. Um, Dave this week was able to, you know, he lost to me, but he beat the median. Um, you yeah, know. my stellar defense caused Spitzer not yes, to hit the median. Exactly. So, uh, <laughs> I was able to knock him off the unbeaten, unbeaten pedestal. Um, yeah. But yeah, the first matchup, I got Michael Getty versus the Milkman. I don't need to do too much analysis in the Pats team. It's not good. Yeah, so, it's not good. Uh, I don't know what he's going to do here. Michael could um, just take the week off, I think, and he'd be just fine. Yeah, uh, I, I'm looking at it here, too, and, you know, I see players that I'm like, you know, you, they're dart throws even in DFS leagues. Um, so it'll be really interesting. I mean, Ronald Jones, uh, dart throw. Jacoby Myers, dart throw. Henry Ruggs, dart throw. Cam Brate, dart throw, I guess. I don't really, you know, it depends on what happens with Rob Gronkowski, especially. Uh, Curtis Samuel, dart throw. Marquez Callaway. Dart throw. All these, they're everybody, every single person on the team is a dart throw. So it's a really, I honestly, uh, I mean, we'll get into this, uh, we'll get into this a little bit later, but I, I don't know if Pat will win a game this year. Yeah, this, uh, the one thing that Pat does have going for him against Michael is that Michael's team does, does have some underperformers on it. Uh, and he has, in past weeks, really struggled to hit his projections. Yeah, the all bus team, yeah, as, well, as he called it earlier in our league chat. But, but some of his guys are, are bound to come around or have bigger games, and he's got two really strong quarterbacks, which is going to keep you in every game in the season, with Aaron Rodgers and Justin Herbert. It does uh, look like uh, Jonathan Taylor and Najee Harris are um, kind of coming legit, around. You know, legit. you know. So I, they definitely didn't start out strong, but I really do think that they're going to be uh, strong, kind of going forward. So. Yeah, I mean the fact, just the fact that he has two quarterbacks and Pat has zero. I yeah, we don't need to spend too much time on this matchup. No, we could move on. All right, so next we got Kirill coming off a fresh 190 point, I believe, league record. No, performance. second highest. Oh you you actually have the highest scoring. I looked it up because I want. I was interested. It's me. It's me. Second highest. Um, yeah, 188 point something. Yeah. Um, you had 196. I do actually um, remember this week. I think I played against Don. Yeah, uh, we were. I thought you were going to break 200. I remember that yeah, week as well. Uh, Will Fuller, I think, had like 47 points. And I think I started like the Eagles defense, and they had like 36 points. I, I remember vaguely that team. Does but, Will Fuller's points still count when he got caught for uh, PEDs? Or uh... they sh I mean, they should. <laughs> I mean, he pretty, he single handedly derailed my championship run last year. So <laughs> that's that's uh, very true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fuck that guy. Um, but yeah. Um, and then you got, um, unfortunately, uh, you know, Dave's injured, plagued uh, team, you know, um, Daryl Henderson, and you know, it's questionable. I thought he looked fine in the game, but unfortunately it was a blowout, so running back's not going to get much work. I have no idea what's going on with Miles Gaskin. I was really high on him at the beginning of the year. I thought he would get a lot of work, be a lot involved in the pass catching game. Uh, unfortunately, that does not seem to be the case. Um, I also don't think uh, Tua injury helps at all, which obviously he has uh, Tua, who is um, hurt as well. Um, and, you know, it's just interesting. It'll just be interesting to see, too. Uh, Jeremy McLaurin uh, really performed well last week. Uh, I believe he had two touchdowns. Yeah, he had a beast game. Yeah, 27.3 points. Probably should have had another one. 
Yeah, I mean, oh God, don't don't say that because I would have lost because of that. Um, but uh, he's got some interesting players on his team. Um, I am going to take Kirill in this despite the David Montgomery injury, who he's listed as questionable right now, but it said he's out for weeks. four, yeah, four to five weeks. He's out. Um, but he didn't tear any ligaments, as far as I'm aware, right? No, no. Um, but yeah, Kirill's going to be in some trouble with running back because. Tyson Williams got Thanos snapped off the face of the planet yep. for no reason. I, he just got beat out by a bunch of 50-year-old guys. So <laughs> there's got to be something going on there that maybe we don't know about. Maybe he's an asshole behind the scenes or maybe he's not practicing well. Or Yeah, I'm not sure. He knows. does have, I mean, he's got a couple, you know, his Teddy Bridgewater got hurt last week, um, but he is he was sitting on the bench. Uh, he's got Justin Fields in the wings. Um, Taylor Heineke um, definitely overperformed. Sam Darnold has been uh, stellar this season, and I don't know if it's, because he's not playing for Adam Gase anymore, and he's not on the Jets. Because even Zach Wilson, you know, number two, not Adam Gase on the Jets, not good. So <laughs> I really have no idea what's going on with with Sam Darnold. Um, but he's playing outstanding. Carolina looks really, really good. They got a good, uh, they got a tough matchup against Philly. I think that defense is pretty tough. Um, but without you know no Noah or uh, he's got Noah fan, but without Teddy Bridgewater, I don't know how effective that's going to be. Um, DK is questionable. Um, he still has Tyreek, so if Tyreek can Get put another three points, touchdowns whatever. and two hundred yards, so uh, I think he's got a pretty good shot. I'm going to definitely take Harrell in this one. Yeah, uh, I mean David's got a rough go. Uh, he's got good players on his team. He's just had some rough injury luck. So. Um, as his team heals, his team's going to get better and better. Um, I kind of regret not having a matchup against him in these early weeks because his team's going to be really strong later in the season probably when I play him. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there's a couple guys every year that just kind of disappear that were players the year before. Miles Gaskin is one of them this year, and I think he was really high on a lot of people's lists, and I remember reading articles about him where he, this is the guy, league winner or whatever, and now, I mean, he got one carry. That's, yeah, it just, was, I don't know what the hell's going on down The in coaching Miami, staff so. doesn't like him. The quarterback doesn't like him. I don't know if they're changing their offensive mindset or whatever the game plan is. He's not part of it. It's Malcolm Brown led the team in carries. And just like 75% of the league right now, it's just like a four-person clusterfuck, and you don't know who's going to get carries, who's going to get touchdowns. Right. Maybe Cordero Patterson's going to score 45 points. <laughs> I don't know. RB2? Uh, we'll get, we'll definitely Patterson. get into Cordero later this Come week. Come on. RB2? Come on. Yeah, it's it's insane. And he's only behind Derrick Henry. It only took him 10 years to get good. Um. All right. Uh, next matchup here, I got Team Sneaky Nico uh, with Erica and Doug Demodome versus um, Adam Briggs here. Um. This actually, uh, Erica's got some injuries right now, and I don't really know what's going on. I mean, Logan, Tom, Logan Thomas obviously uh, was injured early on in the game, so he, I think, got, like, one look. Um, Chuba Hubbard, uh, I mean, she's got an uphill battle in the climb, but I'm not going to counter out only because Patrick Mahomes can make magic happen. That, oh, guy, that guy can score, like, 50 points for you. CMC could also play this week. He's... I, he's practicing so i'm very see, skeptical they're gonna see how it goes um he was i don't i think i, wa I watched the game and it didn't, he wasn't limping noticeably he was out of the game but he walked under his own power and everything which is a lot different than last year when he got injured um so kind of like joe mixon where yeah he's injured but i mean we watched it with our own eyes he wasn't he was like dancing around and jumping around and while cmc wasn't doing that he also didn't get carted off he wasn't getting wasn't getting help walking he was fine so um, eventually, CMC is going to be back here, but um, I think the injuries are mounting for Erica. And for somebody who doesn't historically make a lot of pickups or trades, um, she's kind of just has what she has. And, and yeah, not even uh, not even a lot of transactions. Uh, even going back in our league history, you can see how many transactions people have made. She's sitting at the top, right, um, of the all time winning list. Yeah. Uh, but she, she makes to. the least amount of transactions. Right. I mean, they're that. Something has to be said with that because she is such a good drafter. Uh, unbelievable. Um, that she often doesn't need to make moves. But uh, this could be a time when maybe some free agency or so maybe trades could help her team out dramatically. Yeah, I honestly didn't even realize that the uh, Saquon Barkley trade had been made. I see that um, um, Briggs picked him up. But um, Alvin Kamara, I don't really know what's going on down in New Orleans. Uh, they need to get him more involved. I don't think they know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Derek Carr, uh, I don't really know if he's starting to slide again, if the Chargers defense is that legit. Um, but he hasn't really had problems with any other defense. I mean, he's played three really tough defenses in the first three weeks. Um, and then to kind of not live up to that same expectation against uh, the Chargers, who I'm not saying they have a bad defense, but, I mean, we're talking Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Miami. Right. Those are all, like, top yeah, they're good defenses. top good defenses in the league. Um That'll be interesting. Mark Andrews, uh, you know, in the tight end position, it's always kind of a question mark there. But I think part of that is also getting Josh Jacobs back. Uh, yeah, that's very He's true. gone for, for two weeks, but watching the game last night, you could tell that he's a focal point of their drives where maybe they weren't really doing that with Kenyon Drake or Peyton Barber. Those were throws, now, but now they're going to be runs instead of throws, like those second downs, third downs by the goal line. Jacobs was getting all those looks, all those dump-offs. Uh, so that could affect the Derek Carr going forward. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm uh, unfortunately, with Erica's team being as hurt as they are, I, I've, I keep, can't count her out yet. Um, Justin Jefferson has big playability. Um, Corey Davis has, has shown us this year that he's really good. Patrick Mahomes as well. Uh, I still got to give it to Briggs here. Um, he just... He doesn't have any injuries, um, and his, you know, team has the opportunity to perform really well. And I just I got to give it to Briggs. Yeah, uh, Justin just put three fourths of his team on the trading block right now. So, uh. <laughs> Are we gonna get a trade done on, like, while recording the podcast? That's yeah. gonna be the real question. Let's see if I can just offer him something really quick. We'll see what happens on okay. here. Okay, um, I'm gonna try to go for the captain Hunter Renfro here. All right. Uh, so we're gonna pull up his team. He's got Hunter Renfro. If you watched the game last night. You saw the tackle of the century on the side. Yeah, I, I caught de- that on Instagram. That, that was incredible. Um, that guy will forever be on my team if I can make it happen. <laughs> Just based off that tackle alone, I don't even care about his stats. Do you think we should offer him Judy or uh, Crowder for Hunter Renfro? Which one do you think is likely to get the deal done? I think Judy's probably likely to get it done. I personally would probably go for Crowder initially. You see where he's feeling. Yeah, let's TV try counters let's try with, uh, with a different one. All right. I, I mean, I did send him for something, Devontae Adams, already, and that was rejected like less than two seconds. Yeah, I can only imagine. I know that Devontae is kind of the guy that he does not want to give up. All right, yeah, we'll keep you posted on, on what happens with the trade-off. Yeah, here. hopefully we get something done later this uh, <laughs> later this episode. All right, next matchup here, we have uh, Silent Sweeper, Fins for the wins, uh, Jackie uh, leading uh, with five and three versus last place, um, Phillips, Kyle Phillips here. Uh, he is projected an insane 138. Um, but last week did not perform that well. Um Darren Waller, Cooper Cup, Nick Chubb, Dalvin Cook, Joe Burrow, uh, Amari Cooper. Um, he's got a really, really good team. Um, I I will say right now, Jackie does not have Cordero Patterson in her lineup, which like. she will she will put that in, whether that's the flex or uh, whatever it is. Um, it might be over Jamal Williams. I don't really know. Yeah, uh, I mean, who hasn't played bad, but no. I mean, you're talking a guy that's scoring almost 30 points a week. You can't you can't leave him on your bench anymore, Jackie. Get yeah, him in the game. I mean, Jackie's got one of the deepest teams in the league, and again, she hasn't made a whole lot of free agent pickups either. She drafted really well. Um, she's got Eckler. She's got Josh Jacobs coming off injury. Plus, she's got Patterson and Jamal Williams. So she's got four pretty strong running backs. She's got Deontay Johnson, Stephon Diggs, DJ Moore. Uh, she can't even get Darnell Mooney into her lineup. So again, she's very deep. Uh, she drafted really well. Made a couple of really good early season pickups as well. Yep. Um, her team's one of the strongest in she the league. She got Gronk, who's yeah. who's hurt right now, too. She, she had the unfortunate uh, position of going against Kirill's 188 monstrosity last week. Yeah, she'd be sitting at six and three instead of five, or six and two instead of five and three. So, right. Uh, her team is one of the strongest. She's definitely a championship contender in this league. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Phillips has the unfortunate luck. He keeps getting in-game injuries. So Delvin Cook this last week. Yeah, he's injured the whole time, limping around. Uh, Amari Cooper got injured in game this week. I think the week he did he, come back though. I believe he came back. He scored a touchdown, but not a hundred percent. Right. Um, and then last week, AJ Brown got injured mid game or two weeks ago. So he keeps getting the unfortunate luck of people going down for him. I mean, he still have he has Michael Thomas who's on the pup list send right him, now. Still send Michael Thomas, please. Yeah, I'll take Michael Thomas. Uh, and then yeah, well, the other week he lost. I think both his quarterbacks got injured mid game. So his team is one of the strongest as well. He just is having unlucky game day luck, which is really frustrating if you're sitting down. Oh yeah, I mean, I on his, watching the games and your guys <clears throat> keep going down with injuries. On paper, I mean, his team is 
incredible. Um, I mean, Nick Chubb, Dalvin Cook, those are top 10 running backs, top five possibly. Yeah, you know, well, well, I mean, one thing. With the rest of the season. Cooper Cup, making my this DraftKings year. lineup yesterday, um, I didn't start Darren Waller in my lineup because he's getting so much attention from the defense. He is technically their number one receiver. So the amount of attention he's getting from defenses is allowing those other guys, the Renfro's and the Henry Ruggs, and all those other guys to be completely wide open because their defenses are stacking so much against Waller. Um, Come here. So, yeah, Waller's projection is probably a little bit too high every week since he is getting so much attention. Yeah, he gets on. Uh, I don't know how many targets he gets a week, but it's, it's an absurd seven, amount. Seven to eight. Yeah, it's, it's nine range. It's but absurd amount yeah, of targets. I mean, once they – he made an incredible play last night to catch that touchdown. I think only him, maybe DK Metcalf could have caught that ball in the entire league. Maybe yeah. Mike Williams. He's an incredibly yeah. athletic person out there. I mean, yeah, he gets seven a game since week one. Week one, he had 19 targets. 19. 19 insane. targets. That's crazy. Nope. <laughs> Only one person in the league gets 19 targets. That's Najee Harris. Najee Harris, because <laughs> Ben Roethlisberger can't throw the ball more than seven yards. Hey, I'm fine. I'm fine with it. I have Najee Harris in a, in a dynasty league. So, uh, but yeah, uh, looking at this matchup here, I think it's honestly going to be a lot tighter than the projection says. I'm going to give it to Phillips. Um, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick Jackie. Uh, uh, it's it's gonna be really close. I think I it's just way close in the projection says. I don't believe in Delvin Cook's health. Um, he I, goes out like three, four times a game. Yeah, I mean if they're just gonna keep run, if they're gonna keep running him out there, it's gonna keep happening. Like I'd rather see. I mean, not I guess I don't really care because I don't have Delvin Cook in any of my leagues. But from a football standpoint, from a Vikings standpoint, like they'd be better off sitting him for a couple weeks and letting him heal. Like you have a capable backup, you have a good offense without him. Like, let the guy heal. Otherwise, this is going to be happening all year. Yeah, I like agree. In, um, out, in, out. I mean, I, he only got like nine carries this week. I, I got to, though, I, I got to say, though, Cooper Cup has been playing unbelievable. I mean, down week this week. Um, but, I mean, he, I, I could see him ending the wide receiver one with Stafford behind the helm there. Absolutely. Um, Nick Chubb, I think, has been underperforming so far this season. Son Chubb. So, I, I, I got to give it to him. I Who knows about the injury with Amari Cooper? I I guess I, I can't worry about injuries as much than when I know they're on the field, they're great. All right, so, yeah, so I got to give it to I got to give it to Phillips. We're gonna split this decision. I'm gonna take Jackie. You're gonna take Phillips. Yep. Uh, I don't think either one of us picked the Doug Dimmadome Briggs versus Erica. Oh, I said I said Briggs. You took Briggs. Yeah, I'm I also gonna Briggs. take Briggs. Uh, pending if Christian McCaffrey plays. If that's very yeah, that's very true. If like CMC said, makes a magical comeback, I'm gonna actually take Erica okay. in this matchup. Um, Miles Sanders is a complete dead space in Briggs' lineup, so <laughs> hopefully he uh, T. Higgins is coming back. Maybe he'll swap him out for T. Higgins. But Miles Sanders is dead at this point. Like, thank you for taking him off my hands. Um, I didn't get very much for him. I think I got Melvin Gordon, which is also kind of like a dead spot. I mean, he's, he's been okay. He's in a timeshare, but uh, he's at least getting he's, carries. Yeah, he he gets a lot of carries. He's getting more than two fucking carries. <laughs> That's so sad. All right, <laughs> moving on. We have the Spice Melange in uh, Kyle Spitzer and um, Team J Wald thirty six, which is come on, you got to come up with a better team name than that. Terrible. Get, get some. He's got so many good players on his team that he could figure some weird punny name out of that. Yeah, if you had like a better team name, you could probably win more games. Yeah. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> um. How can you go against Kyler Murray and Tom Brady? Uh, it's such an uphill battle with Spitzer because those guys are going to get you almost 60 points a game. Yeah, I caught him on the one good week. Those guys weren't top performers, and I still couldn't pull out the victory. Yeah, it, uh, he's... 22 out of Kyler and 10 out of Tom he's Brady. He's got a deep team. It's about the best it can um, get. You know, I, I do think... I don't know about Gasicki, but obviously he's got... Uh, Dawson Knox, yeah, who has cool. been unbelievable yeah. for two weeks. He got 20 now. points against me this week. It's really yeah. neat to see every time I pull up my phone at work this week, Dawson Knox had another touchdown. Another catch, another uh, touchdown. I just, stopped yeah, looking at, incredible. I just stopped looking at my phone at about 320 this week, I think. Every time I looked at it, Dawson Knox has like five more points. I'm like, I got no chance this week. I got no chance. Yeah, I <laughs> when I look at when I look at Justin's team over here on the other side, um, I see you know Clyde Edwards-Alaire, uh, Devontae Adams. Those guys have been uh, you know Clyde Edwards uh, 
kind of disappointing early on, but he's starting to pull it together. He's getting those touchdowns. Um, they granted, Buffalo. they're passing touchdowns. They but got Buffalo this week. Yeah, though. that's going to be that's a really a that's matchup. a tough matchup. You're going to hear. Uh, but Dak all, Prescott has the Giants. Yeah, you're going to hear on all the fantasy podcasts and everything this week. This game's going to be fifty to fifty. That game's not going to be fifty to fifty. No, it's going to be, be defensive. Yeah, it's I agree. Be, Maybe not low scoring, but I do think Buffalo wins that that game. Oh, yeah, maybe kind of what you saw last night, where you think it's going to be like a shootout, and it's not going to be a shootout. It's going to be field position. Buffalo's got a great defense. Kansas City's defense is not great, but it's not bad either. Um, All right, um, let's just see here. I I'm going to go with the the spice, the spice melange. I'm going to I'm going to give it to Spitzer here. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time. I just feel like, you know, George Kittle has been underperforming. Chris Carson has been underperforming. CeeDee Lamb has been underperforming. A guy that was supposed to really kind of take the reign as the number one wide receiver, Amari Cooper, still seems to have a pretty strong grasp on that role. Um, Juju Smith-Schuster, um, until Big Ben shows me that he can throw the ball more than a couple yards down the field. Um, he's kind of irrelevant. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is being hindered, I think, by uh, Urban Meyer. So there's just a lot of uh, issues, I think, on his team that I'm going to have to go with uh, Spitzer. I think it's just really hard to overcome Kyler Murray and Tom Brady in general. So Yeah, I think one of the main things that's hurting Justin's team is that the Cowboys are 3-1. and one. So they're having success with the game plan they're running, not forcing Dak to throw the ball 60 times a game. They're having success with Tony Pollard. They're having success with Zeke. And they're having success throwing the ball to the tight ends. So if there's one thing we know about Mike McCarthy, he loves to be conservative. Yeah, so that's very he, true. If he doesn't have to take risk and he doesn't have to throw the ball down the field, he's not going to. He's going to manage the clock, take as much guesswork and as much risk out of the game plan as possible. So as long as the Cowboys continue to roll like they are, Dak Prescott's not going to get the numbers everybody was hoping he was. And that's yeah. also going to hurt. Uh, it's going to hurt Amari Cooper. It's going to hurt CeeDee Lamb. And just those overall numbers. So, I mean, Dak was, his projections were 27, 28 points a game. And now they're down to 21 this week against the Giants. Yeah. So, Jason Garrett revenge game. <laughs> Let's not we'll, forget that. We'll, we'll see. I mean, the Giants did look good this last week, but we'll see all about that. I'm going to take I'm going to take Justin for the upset here. I, okay. I'm thinking that this roster that Justin has right now is not going to be his final roster going to game. Game time. He does have some really good trade might not pieces. Be, might not be his final roster going into uh, you know the end of this podcast. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's very true. Um, one good thing that Kyle has going for him in his lineup, it was already very strong, but James Robinson, if Carlos Hyde continues to be a healthy scratch, then James Robinson is going to get 95% of that workload. And where running back was maybe Spitzer's question mark before, it's not anymore. It's very strong. Um, so I'm going to give this matchup to Justin, though. Okay. Up upset alert. Okay, upset alert. All right, so then we got just our last two. Our matchups are the last ones to go over. Um, let's see. You got Return of the King sitting at 6-2. and two. You got to be feeling pretty good about yourself. I honestly, you know. No Super Bowl um, slump for you. You know, I, I came out. Oh, I lost the first week, but I think it was against league high and league leading scorer um, Don. So, uh, you know, I, I came out, I scored over 100 points, which wasn't great on week one. Derrick Henry had a down week, but, you know, come back, win three consecutive weeks, uh, beat the median in all those weeks. Um, I'm feeling pretty good going into this matchup. Yeah, I mean, good, great for you. You, get, you probably didn't spend a whole lot of draft capital on Kareem Hunt, and you ended up with two of the best running backs in the league. I think Kareem Hunt's top five, and uh, Derrick Henry's got to be, if he's not number one, he's number two. He is definitely number one, one right now, to, but uh, Cordero yeah. Patterson is coming for his number. Yeah, and I think if this was full PPR, Kareem Hunt is the number three running back. So yeah, he's he, he he's drafted, been outstanding. Drafted really well at running back, and that takes care of a lot of problems. Uh, it makes up for a lot of things because that can give you such a competitive advantage over all the other teams in the league because, let's face it, running back is trash. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. uh I mean if you're if you don't get a top five running back, it's a huge dumpster fire in the middle and bottom there. So. It's terrible. I almost don't even want to roster running backs. Like <laughs> I don't even like watching them play anymore. It's just watching that Tampa game and Leonard Fournette's dominating the game and then Ronald Jones gets the touchdown. Like yeah. where's the fun in that? Like, who wants Ronald Jones in Yeah, that? in this in this league especially too, it's <clears throat> I mean, running backs are an extreme premium. Um, this year with the super flex, I feel like that premium went down just like a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I, I will say I'm not a big fan of the super flex so far going in. I just think it's the roster. There's been less trades this year overall. Right. Um, 
it, it's impossible to trade for a quarterback because their value is so high because we have such a deep league. Right. 14 teams, 28 quarterbacks are taken. That leaves three on free agency if they haven't been already picked up. So they're at such a premium. No one wants to trade. No one wants to get rid of them. So I, I think next year I think we should go back. Personally, I will voice my opinion about that, Michael. Let's take that into consideration next year. But, um, I yeah, so kind of going back to the matchup, uh, not to, like, spin off too much. Um, you know, I, I will not say that my team is without problems. Um, uh, I had to, I'm going to have to bench Brandon Cooks this week playing New England. If Like I said, if there's anything Bill Belichick's really good at, Take it away, their best option. Uh, Brandon Cooks is their best, their only option. Only option. So he will be taken out of the game completely. Yeah, I just want to let you know, Davis Mills threw more passes complete to the Bills than his own team in the first half on <laughs> oh Sunday. Oh, my God. So he had yeah. three interceptions to the Bills and one completion to the yeah. Texans. Brandon Cooks ended with uh, 47 yards. I'm pretty sure the offense as a whole didn't have, yard yeah, didn't have an in- So he had 47 of 56 yeah. passing yards. So he is the only option, <laughs> which is great to have in fantasy. Not great to watch out on the field. Um, but you know going forward that Bill Belichick is just going to completely take that out of the equation. Yeah, so. I mean... Uh, Nick's got some problems. Joe Mixon coming off an injury. Yep. Conflicting reports. There's some reports that say he's day to day, and then some reports that say he's week to week. So I don't know. He's knowing Joe Mixon and Joe Mixon's history. He's probably not going to play. I, I mean, there. Whenever he gets injured, there always seems to be like this mysterious, will he or won't he play? And yeah. It usually always ends up with him not playing for I, one reason or the other. I agree, and I feel like he always Joe Mixon always ends up on Nick's team. Always. Joe Mixon, like Nick Seacott is in love with Joe Mixon. <laughs> so um, I will have to give it to myself, um, which in- injuries are, are mounting. Yeah, yeah. But that, and that's really kind of it. I mean, Julio Jones is in his lineup. He, he does maybe have a chance to play this week. I mean, they, Tennessee needs him to play. Right. I mean, they, they looked, they looked bad. I mean, Derrick Henry was good. They do play Jacksonville. So that's, maybe they really don't need him to play this week. I mean, they, that's they true, but I thought that against the Jets rest. too. And they lost. True. So. Um, uh, Will I, they, Fuller they broke a something. finger. Will Fuller's out. He broke a finger. He's going to be out for who knows how long until he yeah. can figure out how to cheat the drug system again. Yeah, I mean, TJ Hawkinson's going to be a really nice bright spot for him. I, I, he's getting a lot of looks, a lot of work there. Um, kind of a down week, but um, you know, started out the season strong. And Mac Jones looked like a star on Sunday night. I'm not going to lie. Uh, unbelievable. So one, one thought that I had during the game. And, yeah, I do know that Brady was playing against Belichick, and Belichick knows how to shut down Tom Brady or whatever the case may be. How come Mac Jones looks so good, and he could throw the football, and Tom Brady couldn't? Yeah. I mean, they the Buccaneers basically completely abandoned the their passing game in the fourth quarter in the second half because Tom Brady couldn't throw the ball. He was throwing it high. He was missing his target. So I don't ever want to go against Tom Brady. I'm never going to be that guy because yeah. he's going to make me look like a dumbass. But I do remember having Peyton Manning his last season. In the first three or four weeks, Peyton Manning looked amazing. Not, you know, same old Peyton Manning, mm-hmm. number one quarterback, chucking the ball around. Somewhere around week five, week six, you could tell something was wrong. And then by week eight and week nine, he couldn't even throw the ball anymore. He yeah, was just noodle arming it out there for sure. It just happened overnight. I'm not saying that's going to happen to Tom Brady because we've both seen Tom Brady play for 20 years. But he did not look good on Sunday night. And yeah. it wasn't just Bill Belichick scheming against him. I mean, he was missing short throws. He was missing long throws. He was high on throws. Uh, not accurate at all. So I'm not saying, but I'm maybe kind of saying something might be going on with Tom Brady. Yeah, well, I mean, it remains to be seen. Um, I think that would never actually be verified. Right. Um, you know, <laughs> similar to the Peyton thing, there wasn't anything yep. wrong with him. Yeah, he's, but he's he just a game manager just, now. Yeah, exactly. So they, they do have the talent, if that were to happen to Tom Brady, uh, where they could still probably win the Super Bowl, just like the Broncos did that year. They were yeah. stacked everywhere. I mean, they're, they they brought it, literally everybody Defense. back. The yeah. whole, the whole yeah. starting same same defense, makeup, so. great defense, great position players. Like, I'm not saying, but maybe I'm kind of maybe saying a little bit. Okay, opinion on the matchup here between um, me and Nick. I'm going to pick you. I don't think there's too many injury concerns this week, too many question marks. And if those guys do set, sit out for him, there's not a lot of replacement level people he can put in. I agree. All right. So then All right. my matchup's the last one. Last matchup. We're talk about that. I'm not feeling very good about my matchup this week going against a, a heavy favorite here. Um, let's take a look here. Don, yeah, Don projected 132.79. Uh, you got 117.43. 
Um, I, I do have to to talk a little yeah. cra- crap about the schedule makers in this league. Um, I don't know who's in charge of writing my schedule, but <laughs> I, I, I've had a really really tough go in this early part of the season. I, I've played Don, I've played Spitzer, I've played Erica, I've played uh, Phillips. Uh, I think that it's the same. I played Justin. Is it not the same schedule as last year? Um, it, I have no idea, but I feel like I my, played Don week one last year. I lost. I and think I played I, Don this year and I lost. It might be the same schedule because I do think I played Phillips first week last year. But seriously, fuck my schedule. <laughs> you've had a you've had a tough <laughs> go of things, um, and man, I mean Don's team is incredibly good. He does have Robert Woods in. Um, which I, I, I guess I, I, he doesn't have a deep team, but his starters are great. Yeah. I mean, so he doesn't have a lot of substitutes. Luckily we're not into those bye weeks yet. I, However, did, I did trade him AJ Dillon last night with the caveat that he would start AJ Dillon over Aaron Jones. That was, <laughs> that was part of the, that was part of the deal. All right. <laughs> so uh, I, I definitely think he'll, <laughs> he'll abide by that. Um, I think that you have a pretty good shot at winning. Um, Thielen is playing Detroit this week, so he's got a much easier matchup than the Browns. Um, Tyler Lockett on Fort and Russell Wilson are playing the Rams, which that one's going to be a really tough one. Right. However, I think they could get it done. Um, I mean, he does have Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts, who Jalen Hurts, not even a good quarterback. What a bunch of crap. But, we, we talked about this earlier. But he can rush. He can, he's, the, he's a great fantasy quarterback. Right. He's this year's Lamar Jackson, yes. where we know he's not a very good player, but he scores 30 points every week because his team sucks and they're constantly playing from behind. Yeah. Um, if I'm looking at it on paper, I think he got a shot, but I do have to give it to Don. Uh, Aaron Jones, Josh Allen, Travis Kelsey. Uh, Debo Samuel has been absolutely lights out this year. Uh, you know, had one dud week uh, against Green Bay. Um, but other than that, I mean, this week, granted, he got an 80-yard broken bomb pass play garbage but, time and garbage know, time yeah but um, uh garbage time points still count he's at rams defense i i gotta give it to, i gotta give it to don again um yeah my quarterbacks have been good but they haven't been great so uh the way i constructed my team was I, I thought two quarterbacks could keep me in any matchup and they will but they haven't been great they've been good they've been scoring well like you have two eight, very capable quarterbacks right they've been scoring between 18 to 21 and I really need them to score from like 25 to 30 points to put me over the top. And they just haven't been getting there. Lamar Jackson's actually having one of his best all-around seasons he's ever had. He's actually throwing the ball really well this year instead of just only running it. Uh, his accuracy has improved. He's getting more confidence every week. So it is cool to see that. What I don't like to see is Pete Carroll chomping his gum on the sidelines thinking he's badass and not giving Russell Wilson any opportunities. Yeah, I don't know what – like they looked like they had the game plan going for them – uh, the first couple weeks, it's crazy. and they have just completely abandoned all of that game. First play. half this I week, don't know Russell Wilson's had, had like two points. He had like five pass pass attempts in the first half. Like, what are you doing? You have Russell Wilson, you have DK Metcalf, you have Tyler Lockett, and you're giving the ball to like Alex Collins and like dumb shit like that. Like, yeah, I I don't. <sighs> there's a reason why they're two and two because I don't know if Pete Carroll's a fantastic coach anymore. Um, I mean, they pissed away last season too, so. Being two and two, their schedule has not been strong. They could easily be four and all if they would just give in and take over the identity we right. all know that they should have, which is just like they should be Chiefs light, like just throwing the ball all over the goddamn place, and they just don't do it. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what's going on there either. Um, like I said, I, I got to give it to Don here. There's just uh, too many question marks on the team. I'm taking the myself to lose for sure. Um, I'm just hoping I can go for the median this week, uh, get one and one, and get out of this tough part of my schedule, and hopefully I get some better days ahead. Down, yeah. down the as we get into the middle part of the season here. Hundred, hundred percent agree with you. All right, so uh, we're going to try a new segment out this week. We're going to do uh, a little buy or sell here. All right. I'm excited um, for this. I have nine buy or sells. I don't know what they are. Um, yeah, I have not revealed this device at all before we started. I just, uh, you know, before he came over, I started taking a look at things. I was kind of concocting some ideas in my head after watching um, this week and, the, and obviously the whole season. Um, and honestly, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. So. Let's uh, start it out right. with the first one here. I'm ner- I'm a little nervous. I'm a buy little nervous. or sell Robert Woods top 20 wide receiver by the end of the year. I believe he currently is the wide receiver 40. I'm going to sell this. And just watching the game, uh, I think we talked about this on an earlier podcast. Like 
him and Matthew Stafford are not going out to brunch together. Yeah, they are not on the same page. No, I mean, they're not doing workouts in the morning, like Rocky style on the beach, uh, hugging after it's done. Um, and just the overall production, something's off there. Like, he had a garbage time touchdown this week. Um, but besides that, not really targeted in the passing game that much. He's looking for Cooper Cup is his number one read, obviously. But Higby's part of that offense now. Uh, Van Jefferson is up and coming. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely yeah. a dart throw every week. So Van Jefferson and Deshaun Jackson are, are those deep threats now uh, where Robert Woods doesn't need to be. And I feel like last year maybe Robert Woods was their deep threat. So that part of his game is gone. Yeah. So he is actually fully just a possession receiver right now. And if he gets those some red zone looks, maybe he gets some touchdowns, maybe he doesn't. But touchdown luck is just that. It's just yeah. luck. So, he just doesn't seem to be involved like he was last year like at, in any facet of the right. game. Yeah, so, touchdowns are hard to predict. He was always kind of that, um, you know, as the fantasy footballer said too, uh, he's that um, high floor type player. You know, he didn't have the ceiling that Cooper Cup necessarily did, and we're like 100% seeing that this season. Yeah, so definitely itself for me. Um, wide receiver three range maybe. I think maybe... Low end wide receiver two, high end wide receiver three, um, but yeah, not top twenty, maybe top thirty, but top twenty is too high. Top twenty is too high. Okay, all right. Uh, next one I got here: Randall Cobb, Ooh. top ten wide receiver this coming week. Man, this ter- past week he was the wide receiver six. If he didn't score that second touchdown, he would have been the wide receiver fifteen. Yeah, turn back the clock time for Randall Cobb, and I think this is part of the reason why they brought him in. Uh, I mean, Aaron Rodgers knows what trash the second, third, and fourth options are on the Packers. And the inability of his other wide receivers to get open and create separation is actually hurting Devontae Adams' value this year, too. I mean, Devontae Adams has not had a great season because they are getting double, triple teamed. He's getting double, triple teamed every play. So if the Packers can get a second receiving threat uh, that's not Tunyon, uh, I think that will go a long way uh, in increasing Adams' value. But uh, as long as MVS is out, Cobb is going to be part of the game plan. Yeah, he definitely seemed to be really heavily involved and favored over um, any other option. Uh, I They don't have any other options. I'm going to buy this. I'm you're going to you're gonna buy? You can think he's going to be a top 10 wide receiver. Uh, I'm going to buy. Okay. All right. So this next one, I was kind of having a little fun with it. Um Buy or sell that we see David Montgomery before Matt Nagy is fired. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna sell this, and I I actually brought a little something for uh, Matt Nagy this oh week. Oh boy, so oh boy, a little prize. This is for him. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's a Chipotle hat. Uh, <laughs> that's for uh, Matt Nagy. Uh, I mean, he does have some competition right now. Nick Sirianni. Um, I I think they both look pretty good in this hat. But I did just lose a couple employees at the Maple Grove Chipotle. So I figured I'd get ready, bring a hat in. Uh, Nagy doesn't have long to go. I mean, you lose David Montgomery to injury. Dave, uh, Damian Williams is also beat up. And what's the first thing they do? They trade for a wide receiver. Yeah. Like, what What are you doing, guys? What Do you understand how, how football works? <laughs> I, I, I guarantee Matt Nagy watched Sports Center and he watched Cordero Patterson score 42 points. And he's, he's like, like oh, let's get a wide receiver in yeah, there. Let's get yeah. some guy that we can throw back there <laughs> and let's just, you know, let's throw him the ball 14 times a game instead of Allen Robinson because that makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'm going to sell. I'm gonna, Matt Nagy's going to be long gone. Dave Montgomery is going to be very happy rehabbing, knowing that he doesn't have to listen to his coach talk. Yeah, j- I don't. I have no Walker. idea what's going on in that front office that he still has a job. Um, Unbelievable, and they're going to lose Allen Robinson after this year too, if not before then, yeah. because there's no way that guy continues to play for that trash ass franchise. Yeah, it's 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 not good, and and you know Allen Robinson has been very disappointing this season overall. So Chicago's I think he just in wants, I think he just wants out. They're so. absolutely in shambles. They're leave, leaving Soldier Field. They bought new ground in Arlington Heights. The Soldier Field's been around forever for the history of the Bears. Right. And, and the fact that they're leaving that stadium, that, that team's really lost their identity. They've had really bad drafts, really bad quarterback decisions. Uh, it's not a good state. I know, of, even, not even a good Justin state of Fields getting, their, getting a rookie uh, quarterback. And I honestly thought I was pretty high on Justin Fields going into the season. He but he does not good. look good. No. I, I think that is a, a naggy thing, though. Seriously. Um. So last, you know, not this past week, but the week before in week three when he came in to, to get, um, replace Andy Dalton, um, they just stuck with the Andy Dalton game plan, and they were like, why is this, why is this not working? Who, I'm like, 
So who was their starter when... Make the when, plays happen for your quarterback. When Trubisky started, who was their starter then? Was it Grossman? Was it... I don't remember. It was somebody that absolutely just sucked too. And even back then, give Trubisky a shot. Like, it can't get much worse than what you're doing. Right. And the, and the fact that he wouldn't... Or I'm not sure what is going on there, but it, it's incredible. It's like he's very one-dimensional has a game plan, can't alter it, can't make adjustments. And if there's ever been a sign of bad coaching before, it's no adjustments mid-game. I used to say it all the time about the Bengals and Marvin Lewis. Is like, I guarantee they're, they're going to go into halftime and they're going to come out in the second half and do the same exact thing. Yeah. They're, they're going to wonder why it's not working. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, <laughs> halftime adjustments and manageable third downs. Those are it's the insane. strategy to win. So, yeah, game. absolute sell. All right. Daniel Jones. Ooh, Daniel Will Jones. he be a QB1 the rest of the season? He's currently the QB7. I think he's got a good shot. Uh, and the reason why I say that he's kind of got the cheat code a little bit is he does get that rushing work. Yeah. Um, and you have to get Sans Tom Brady. You have to get a little bit of rushing work to be in that conversation. Yeah. Um, what Tom Brady's got going for him is they never run in the red zone. It's just Tom Brady chucking one-yard passes for touchdowns constantly. Yep. So that's Tom Brady's cheat code a little bit. Uh, but if you're not a rushing quarterback this year in the league in general, it's going to be really tough to be crack that top 10. He's got that this year. Um, so low end, like maybe quarterback nine or quarterback 10. But I'm going to buy that. They got some good pieces there. Uh, Saquon Barkley, if he returns to form, that's just another weapon to open up the offense. So okay. I'm going to buy that one. Nice. I like that. Um, I if, if I had a, an opinion on this, I just made these because I thought they were interesting. Um, I would sell. I don't think he's going to perform as well okay. as he has the rest of the season. But it's not to say that I think he'll be much farther out of that QB1. Range. John Ross is back. Yeah. Pick him up. That's true. All right. Austin Eckler. What will he finish the running back one? The strongest the man season? in the NFL. Yes. I was told 27 times last night yeah he was incredible last night he's really kind of come into form after having uh an average first week or two yeah i, um, I bet he's the only person in the nfl that can do a one-arm pull-up i believe he is currently the running back two on the season um cordero being the running back three let me just take a look at that actually here but um so, yeah, uh, currently, let's see here. He is the running back, too, behind Derrick Henry by a considerable margin. However, with his improved game, do you think that he could finish the running back one? BRB one. I'm going to sell. And just even if you watched the game last night, he had a monster game, and he looked good. Uh, he, it is a, the offensive coordinator for the Chargers is the old Saints offensive coordinator. Okay, so, so we're they, kind they, of Kamara-esque. You're, running, you're watching a Kamara offense uh, being ran with – Austin Eckler as Kamara. Uh, so it looks really good right now. Uh, will it continue to look good? I think if you watched the game last night, constantly limping around, every play is looking to the sidelines to see if somebody can come come in for him, went to the medical tent once. Uh, there's just always something going on with him. There's always an injury. There's always something looming. Um, he's a perfect sell-high candidate for me. I have him in my other league. Um, I'm going to be looking to trade him this week for, or as much as I can possibly get. Uh, it's only a matter of time with Austin Eckler till he goes down with some sort of injury. It might not be season ending, but it's going to be something nagging, whether it's like two weeks or three weeks yeah. or a hamstring pull It does here. seem to be his kind of kryptonite. Always. always. Every always year. A couple games he's getting hurt. Yeah, up. He's always the top performer when he's playing, but every single year there's something that happens to him. So I'm going to sell this, and I'll actually sell him out of the top 10 running backs on the wow. season. Wow. Okay. That's a little steep for me. I don't... <sighs> I don't think he finishes the running back one. However, I do think he finishes a running back one. I want him to be good. I want him to be a top I running back. I love Austin Eckler. He just can't ever put a whole season together. That's and true. Just the fact that it's one game lo longer this season, uh, eee, I, I, I'm going to stay away from Austin okay. Eckler. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. All right, buy or sell. Kareem Hunt finishes higher than Nick Chubb. See, I, I'm a huge Kareem Hunt fan, and free Kareem Hunt, seriously. like If he, if he had a backfield all of himself... We'd be talking about this guy as the number one or number two quarterback. I mean, he is uh, the running back six currently on the year yeah. in a split backfield with Nick Chubb, who was well, the running back 11. What did he Did he push a girl down? Is that what he did? He kicked a he Yeah, kicked, he pushed he, and kicked. Which, like, one, she, which one did Tyreek do? Did he kick or did he push? I don't remember. <laughs> I, I, it's First of all, they shouldn't be doing that at all. We, we don't, I don't condone know, that here on I don't the, know this why, podcast. I don't know why that's like even a thing. I don't uh, care how so we're, manly we're, you think you are. That's not cool. We're one Kareem Hunt kick away from him being a top 
running back in this league with on the Chiefs. Like, yeah. had if we could go back in time and play what if, had he not done that, we'd be talking about him on like Derrick Henry category, if not better than Derrick Henry. Yeah, he, he's been incredible. He's part of the receiving game too. Uh, I mean, this guy was all world. So it's one of those rare circumstances on a team where both running backs are equally talented and either one of them could lead a backfield. Um, I'm going to buy that. You're going to buy it? You think he finishes higher? Uh, Kevin Stefanski, the offensive coordinator there, they have a great game plan and it's working for them. Uh, so why not continue to use it? They're not giving Baker many opportunities to throw the ball there. When they get into the red zone, they're not throwing the ball at all. It's going to be all running back. So it's kind of a crap shoot, whether it's going to be Hunt or it's going to be Chubb that gets that touchdown. Well, one thing that I noticed, too, especially there. in this last it's game, an option. was that they were on the goal line, and they would take Nick Chubb out, and they put Kareem Hunt in. And yeah. I was like, that's not how this is supposed to work. <laughs> like, the, these are the Nick Chubb carries. I'm happy because I'm a, you know, Kareem Hunt right. owner. However, I'm, like, very confused as to, like, why they're doing that. Well, this did happen. I actually had Chubb at the beginning of the season last year, and this this was very similar to their game plan at the beginning of last season where they, Kareem Hunt was actually getting just as much work as Chubb. And then as you got into the middle part of the season, Chubb was getting more work. And I don't know if they're splitting it up just because it is a longer season and they do have the luxury of having two great running backs. Yeah. Maybe they're just spelling them a little bit. Uh, this could be the future of running back if we if – we're going to continue to have an extra game in the season. Um, but I'm going to buy that. I mean, Kareem Hunt has looked great. It's the game plan. Uh, it is kind of luck to see which one of them gets the touchdown every week. But as long as it continues to be Hunt, yeah, I'm going to buy him. Okay. All right. Um, buy or sell. Mike Williams finishes higher than Keenan Allen. Oh, super sell. All You're going to super sell it? Yeah. Right now, Mike Williams is the wide receiver five. Has performed unbelievably. Keenan Allen, the wide receiver, 21. Yeah, I mean, let's get something straight. Mike Williams is not that good. So we watched the game last night, one for three for 11 yards. That's the right, that's the true Mike Williams. Okay. That's the Mike Williams that I've known to grow in love. Yeah. Uh, he's he's one, also bound to get hurt. He's one, some same thing as Eckler, man. One hamstring pull away, one bad route, one hard hit. That guy's going to be off for four to five weeks. Happens every year. It's only a matter of time. So Cre- Keenan Allen, 100% going to finish higher than Mike Williams. I'm going to sell that one. All right. I got two more here. Oh, okay. I got two more buy or sells. Um, Buy or sell, Pat scores more than 100 points this year in a single game. I'm going to sell. He needs to do something. I don't know what he's doing. Coming from the person who predicted his victory two weeks ago, I believe believe in your team. uh, But when you go from having three quarterbacks and now you have zero and you don't really have anything to show for it in a super flex league, it's going to be tough to even crack 70, much less 100. Yeah. Okay. So there's no quarterbacks to trade for. No one's going to give up. And that's, like I said, that's an issue no that I have currently up. with the league. However, most people are smart enough to at least roster enough quarterbacks. I mean, Krill has four quarterbacks right. on his roster. Yeah. So. I mean, Davis Mills is available, minus five points last week. <laughs> uh, he He's he coming to a waiver wire near you. Okay. All right. Last one I got here. And this is uh, this is this pains me to have to even say this. Kelvin Ridley finishes a wide receiver one by or sell. I'm going to sell all this. And as somebody who was in discussions of trade for Kelvin Ridley with you last week, um, I would have taken it, but I was also okay not getting it, getting not getting him on my team. And it's not so much a Kelvin Ridley issue; it's a Matt Ryan issue. Yeah, and I maybe mean, he threw four touchdowns. Yeah, I and mean, not one went to. Calvin Ridley. Some of these guys are just getting old, and I, I think you can see it with Ben Roethlisberger too. Is they don't have the accuracy or the deep arm anymore. It's everything short. I think his average depth of target is like five yards. It's something really gross. So yeah. there's still going to be a lot of targets for Calvin Ridley, Kyle Pitts. There's still going to be a lot of catches, but there's no downfield threat at all. There's no passes over twenty yards. Um, I was actually listening to another podcast, and then. There's one team in the NFL that hasn't completed a pass of 40 yards or more. It's the Falcons. Oh, that's not that's not good news. That's all I got for buy or sell. Super sell. But uh, uh, I, I I like that. I like that segment. We'll have, that to, good. we'll have to do that more. I like it. I did not know it was coming. So everything off the top of my head there. Yeah, perfect. All right. So one last segment. Uh, somebody did win the Powerball yesterday in California. Seven hundred million dollars. Dude, that's insane. Even, I still, it still imagine, blows my mind that that's like a thing. That if you want seven hundred million dollars, how much of it 
would you try to spend on Taco Bell on your first first purchase? <laughs> I would buy the whole line. Like I would, <laughs> you know, like everybody behind me gets free Taco Bell. Yeah, like, sure. I'll take seventy four Crunchwrap Supremes. Thank you, just because I can. I just want to. I just want to do that one <laughs> one time in my life. Um, but we're gonna the actual Powerball number was number fifteen. Okay, was the the grand finale Powerball the winner? So I'm gonna give you some famous athletes maybe who have worn number 15 uh and let me know what you think about these guys if you, if you like them and maybe sure. we'll, maybe when we're done when you talk about your favorite number 15 okay uh of all time in this list there's some pretty good names on here 15 has been a pretty incredible number throughout the channels of sports history going all the way back bart Starr was number 15 yeah obviously packers um big fan of bart star good didn't watch much game film on him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't know how much was out there at the time. Number three fantasy yeah. quarterback for 10 straight years. <laughs> but um, obviously, as a Packer fan, Bart Starr always has a close spot um, in my heart, um, making the Packers what they are as a franchise. It's, I mean, it's incredible to have a person of his stature uh, amongst, you know, literally his name's up in Lambeau right. Field. Yeah. Um, you know, I believe he, he was at a game. Uh, a couple of years ago or whatever sure. it was. Um, so it was, you know, it's just incredible to, ha- to have the history that Bart Starr brings. Yeah, so, team. yeah, that's way back in the day. Uh, he's one of the more famous old school examples. Uh, coming all the way nowadays, Pat Mahomes is also number 15. Do you think there's some inspiration there? Um, yeah, obviously. Uh, I mean, Patrick Mahomes picked his number well because he shows that he is going to be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, Absolutely. If, if not the greatest. I think there's still potential there. Um, Tom Brady obviously has a pretty firm grasp on that right now, <laughs> I would say. Uh, and had Patrick Mahomes actually overcome uh, the I- issues <laughs> last year and won that Super Bowl, I think there's like a really legitimate shot that he has. Uh, there's a chance, but it's it's going to be hard uphill battle for him. But, I mean, he's going to probably break the passing yard record. Oh, yeah, um, easily. P- potential to break the touchdown record. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, even better than goes on. even better than Mahomes and Bart Starr, there is one other quarterback. Oh boy, Tim Tebow <laughs> was number fifteen, and yeah, seriously, I mean, talk about winning percentage. Like this guy's got to be at the top of the list. Yeah, he. So that I remember um, <laughs> when he f- was playing for the Broncos and they won that playoff game. I Against believe he was like the first yeah. <laughs> Heisman quarterback to win a playoff game or right. something like yeah, that. The it Steelers was, just absolutely Super Bowl favorites that year, like. Just railroading yep. teams, and then they run into Tim Tebow. Yeah, you didn't want oh to run into God. Tim Tebow. He he was God's plan. That's Seriously, what I'm going like to say, God's plan. 70 yard bombs <laughs> to himself. Like, unbelievable. Like, that guy is the Chuck Norris of football. I can't I believe he's not on our he, roster. I don't know why he got so much hate when he was a quarterback. I didn't think he was great by any means, but he I never thought he was done. bad. Yeah. He's like Taysom Hill. Yeah. If Taysom Hill was on any other team except the Saints, like that guy would be cut probably as well. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I but yeah, I I don't have a problem with Tim Tebow. Um, I'm he bulked up to be that tight end position. Was he still going to be 15 in the tight end position? I don't think so. With the number changes, uh, whoever just signed with the Jaguars, they took his number. Okay, Dan Arnold. Oh and yeah, so, uh, whatever number Dan Arnold is now, that's what number Tim Tebow was. I don't. I I'm not even Dan sure Arnold. what it was. Um, okay, so two other football examples. Two of my favorite players of all time were actually number 15. One is Michael Crabtree, oh. and the other is Brandon Marshall. And if anybody knows about Brandon, me and Brandon Marshall, I love that dude. I love that dude. <laughs> uh, he is my old school Antonio Brown before Antonio Brown was a thing. I always had an issue with Brandon Marshall because he, I never drafted him. I always drafted him. And because I was never high, you know, like, oh, the Bears, you know, whatever. <laughs> um that guy always screwed me over. Like every time I played him, he would have like a 30 point fantasy game. And I'm he like, God them. damn it. What is going on? Brandon Marshall. That happened to you every week because he scored 30 points every week. He, he was, he was, was incredible. insane. He yeah. was a PPR monster. Um, and he actually started drafting him around the time when PPR first came out. Um, and yeah, he was like the cheat code of PPR. If you could get Brandon Marshall on your squad Every week was like 12 catches, 13 was catches. Was it the green shoes that he got fined for for yeah. mental health yeah. awareness? Yeah, he green shoes. That? Yeah. And he was good everywhere he went. Uh, Dolphins, Broncos, yeah. Bears. Seahawks was towards the end of his career. He didn't do very much there, but I, th- I do think he had one good season with the no, Seahawks. He was, he was solid everywhere he yeah. went, yeah. What, what a stud. And uh, Crabtree, while he's a, kind of a psycho, like 
he was also, also had a couple of really good years in there. I, I really enjoyed I watching him play football. I had him. Um, I remember watching him in college, and he had one of the greatest college football plays I've ever seen yeah. against Texas. Yeah. Um, and one of the greatest so, feuds all, of all time against Richard Sherman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I wish he would have done better in the NFL. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, the NFL, the, the skill level is, like, so incredibly high there right. that – uh, I don't think people understand, you know, sometimes like how good you have to be to be good in the NFL. Oh, and like even the worst player in the NFL is like an incredibly gifted athlete. Right, and, and to be talented. consistently good, like Crabtree didn't have a huge window, but the three or four years that he was a star, he was good. Yeah, he was, he really was solid. Good. Yeah. Um. Also, some, so some those are the most notable football. Okay. Examples. You have a favorite out of all those guys. Probably gonna go with Michael Crabtree. Crabtree. I really, I I'll, really love I'll Michael take, Crabtree. I'll, yeah, I'll take Brandon Marshall. Definitely okay. my favorite fifteen of all time. Uh, some notable examples from baseball: we had Carlos Beltran was fifteen. Okay. Uh, Dustin Pedroia was number fifteen. Sure. And then Jim Edmonds, kind of an old school example, yeah. but number fifteen, one of the greatest baseball catches of all time, over the shoulder looking like a wide receiver out there, not even seeing the ball. Was that going back into center field? Right on the warning track. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's such an incredible catch to make. On the Angels, one of the greatest catches of all time. So those are some notable examples from baseball. Basketball's got some really good ones. Okay. Vince Carter, number 15. Vince Sanity, love it. Yeah. Uh, Carmelo Anthony is number 15. Okay. And then probably my favorite of all of them is Ron Artest, who was also number 15. Malice at the Palace. Yeah, loved, loved me some Ron Artest. The guy was just so yeah, angry. One of the best brawls in sports history, number 15, Ron Artest, throwing cups at people, throwing punches, hitting people with chairs, WWE style. It I was, love how awesome. like, they, they talk about it, but they don't like ever show it anymore. <laughs> they just are like, it is the anniversary of the Malice at the Palace. And moving on in other news, we have other things going on. So I was actually, I was in college when Malice at the Palace happened, and I was bartending that night. And everybody in the bar stopped what they were doing, like simultaneously. Everybody stopped drinking at once and like looked at the TVs. And we <laughs> like, we turned the music down and we turned the sound up. This is like a college bar, so there's like... 300 drunk people just like watching the tv watching these basketball players like fight the fans and like this is awesome yeah that was uh, i mean <laughs> what what happened what did he get hit with was it like some popcorn yeah, or something so it was it was a hard fall ben wallace if you remember yep, him a yep. huge guy there was like maybe 10 seconds left in the game and ron artest went for like a layup and ben wallace just absolutely like railroaded him like murdered him so ron artest is like i'm not I don't want any part of this. He went and laid down on the scorer's table. Yep. And somebody, some jackass in the fan hit him with a cup of soda. Like, was that what it was? From I, a I long they, ways away. I knew they threw it. Yeah, like like they, a, yeah. And somebody on the Pacers saw who it was. So all the Pacers jumped up, ran into the stands, and got this guy. And then the fans started fighting the Pacers, and all the Pacers <laughs> started fighting them. Uh, and then I couldn't imagine watching that live. I would lose my mind. It was amazing. It was cool at the time. I mean, it's not not cool. We don't condone that, but it was pretty cool to watch. Oh yeah. Uh, and then once they broke it up, once they finally got the players out of the stands, the fans kept coming on the court and trying to like fight them more. And the Pacers players are just hauling off and just punching these guys. Oh out. my god. Jermaine O'Neal just absolutely railroaded this guy. <laughs> I mean, it was awesome. Uh, but yeah, one of the greatest fights of all time. But, absolutely. Uh, definitely an inspired list. I think my favorite out of anybody on this whole list, probably Vince Carter. I mean, talk about consistency and just an uh, incredible career. I think he just retired last year. If he even retired, he might he might I know, still I think be playing. He, I think he officially retired. Okay, I think uh, last year was his last year. I he's think the only years. player to play in three different decades. Yeah, I think he 20-year career. So many great memories, slam dunk contests, a fantastic college player, North Carolina, some of those – yeah, incredible I mean, plays, he had yeah. one of the greatest dunk contests of all time. Absolutely. I agree with you. I would have to say uh, Vince Carter is probably my favorite 15 basketball player, mm. at least off the list that you have here. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that was a fun list. So. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right, we are done for the day. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Peace out. I've had such a great time. We're going to be back next week, barring any, um, any serious... Uh, Doggy emergencies. Yeah. So. No more emergencies. Send me your players. Send them send them your players. Peace out, guys.